Hey, Antiochian Village. I'm Father Chris Shadid, the Assistant Camp Director at the Antiochian Village, and I'm here with our buddy, Billy. Hi, and I'm Zaina from Orlando, Florida. Welcome to Byzantine Chant. We're so glad that you guys are joining us. We're so excited to be able to teach you all just a little bit about Byzantine Chant every week. And each week, we're going to be looking at a different tone uh, because there's eight Byzantine tones in the uh, Byzantine tradi tradition of the Orthodox Church. And we're going to start out with this week with tone one. Now, Zaina is actually a music teacher down in Florida, and she's a really good chanter. In fact, if you remember her from, from a couple summers ago, when she was arts and crafts coordinator, Zaina did an amazing job. And I will tell you this because Zaina won't brag about herself, but Zaina started out the summer not knowing anything about chanting. But she was able to work with me a lot and uh, practice the tone. She took her book home or back to her cabin with her and she practiced a lot. And I'll tell you, by the middle of the summer, she was leading services and doing really well and even able to start the tones on her, on her own. And so uh, the reason I really want Zaina here is uh, to help teach because one, she knows a lot about music and two, because she's an amazing example of how quickly somebody can pick up the tones and, and how simple they really are if you just put in a little bit of effort. Well, thanks. Um, so before we get started, I want to give a brief introduction into chanting. So chanting is basically using our voices to praise God. Um, throughout the centuries, the Byzantine style of music has developed over the Eastern Orthodox Church, especially in those Middle Eastern and Greek areas of the world. So overall, we have eight Byzantine tones total. So the best way to learn the tones, before we even get started, the best way to learn all the tones is number one, go to church. Most especially Saturday Great Vespers and Sunday uh, Orthros or Matins and Liturgy. Uh, because the tones have a rotation cycle, uh, with a few exceptions here and there, but most typically they change Saturday at Great Vespers for the week. And so if this week's tone one, then the next week is tone two, all the way through tone eight. So if you're going to Vespers on Saturday and Orthros uh, on Sunday morning and liturgy, then you're going to learn the tones really well, just with time and with practice. So the first question is, what is a tone? Well, Tones are kind of like different melodies. They all have different kinds of sounds. And each tone is based off a different part of the scale. If anyone has ever taken a music class, we know the basic major scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, and do. And in Byzantine chant, we use the Greek syllables, which are ni, pa, vu, ga, vi, ke, zo, and mi. And so Zaina, if you don't mind, would you mind uh, just singing uh, each scale for us real quick, just a major yeah. scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. And the Greek scale? Ni, pa, vu, ga, di, ke, zo, ni. So they're essentially the same thing. We just tend to use those syllables because the Byzantine chant ha has a rich tradition in the, the Greek and the Mediterranean world. Um, so we're going to be using, we're going to try to use a little bit of both, both the Western and the Eastern or the Byzantine uh, syllables there. Uh, so when we, when we start going to it. Um, now, when we talk about tones, each tone is based off of a different part of the scale. So each tone has its base or its main note on a certain part of that. And without getting too technical, because if you get too technical, you start to understand there's different scales and different uh, microtones and all these fancy words about different intervals between notes, but we're going to keep it pretty simple for, for our purposes here. Um, but basically, some tones are more major or bright, kind of like Zaina just uh, sang a major scale, so it sounds kind of happy, whereas uh, other tones are a little bit more minor or sad. And the church does this on purpose because there are some times when we sing hymns that are really sad in nature. For instance, on Holy Thursday night, when the priest carries the cross around the church, um, and he sings, today he suspended upon the earth is suspended upon, uh, upon the tree. We're saying Christ is going to be crucified. It's very, very sad. And so we use a very minor tone, such as tone six. Uh, whereas when we uh, sing something like Christ is risen, it's very royal. It's very majestic. So we use a royal sounding tone like tone five. Uh, and so that's why we do those different things. Now, when I say a tone is based off of a different part of a scale, uh, this means uh, it's part of the scale, not a keyboard. So it's not like tone eight is based off the knee or the do. 
that does not mean it's based off a C because a C is a very specific um, sound, whereas a part of the scale could be put on any different note on the keyboard wherever. So I could sing mi pa vu ga di ke soni so ke di ga vu pa ni, or I could sing it lower mi pa vu ga di ke soni so ke di ga vu pa ni. So my point is, I can put me, or I can put the different scale wherever I want it. The important thing is that it's put in a place that is most comfortable for all of us to sing. And also, Byzantine chant is kind of like jazz, because jazz uh, stays in a certain scale, and it has a certain sound, but you can kind of go and do whatever you want with it. And so, same thing with Byzantine chant. There's a lot of freedom to move around, um, unless, of course, we're singing from music so that we can all sing together. But if I'm just, call it free chanting, uh, if I'm just free chanting, then um, there's a lot of freedom and I'm able to, as long as I stay within that scale and those certain intervals, I'm able to do a lot of different things with, with my voice. So each tone has a few more important notes in the scale. So the main note is going to be the note that you're always going to end on. And then the other important notes are going to be those that you rest on while you're chanting. Now the main note is called ison. You may have heard of that term before. And ison is a Greek word that means same because it's kind of like home base. So the ison means it's on the note that you always come back to. So it doesn't really matter where I start when I'm chanting, but when I come back, it's got to come back to home base. And if Zena is keeping my e zone for me, then she does that because one, it sounds good, but two, because it helps me as the chanter know where to come back to at the end. And now if you want to get into a tone, we use what's called a pikima. This is a series of different notes that help us hear the different intervals that we can get easily into the tone. So this week we're going to start with tone one. Now tone one is based off of the pa or the re. So do re re ni pa pa, and that ni pa pa is the apikima because it's a couple of notes that help get me into the tone. It helps me hear. So another apikima that I can do for tone one, ni pa 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 di ga vu pa re so fa mi re. So that those um, intervals between the notes really help me to get into that. Uh, and I'd encourage you maybe pause the video and try singing that apikima to yourself so that you can start to start to get into that as well. Now, one thing that I found really helpful when I was growing up because I essentially taught myself how to chant and uh, there's a lot of good to that, but I obviously did not get a lot of theory until much later when I went to seminary. But one thing that I learned growing up was I just kind of picked something that I already knew. Now, my dad's a priest, so as a priest kid, I did a lot of house blessings with my dad, which was fun because one, I got fed, and two, I got to go see all of our parishioners. And uh, while I was doing that, obviously my dad was blessing houses. And when he blessed houses, he would sing the troparian, or the theme song, for uh, Epiphany, or when Christ was baptized, which is in tone one. So I got to know that, that hymn really well. When thou, O Lord, was baptized in the river Jordan. And so what I would do when I was starting to learn the tones to myself, first of all, I bought a camp book and I took it home and I practiced the music by playing it on the piano and sang it over and over. Second of all, I would find something that I knew in that tone and I would get it in my head and then start repeating it. So I'd say, when thou, O Lord, was baptized in the Jordan, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth and a door round about my lips. Here I am sitting at my desk with my friends, Billy and Zaina. So I get that melody in my head by something that I already know. I've already done the work growing up. I've already done that work. I already know something in tone one. And so then I have those notes in my head and I can go ahead and start singing whatever I want in tone one. Now, before we start, I want you to know that we have uploaded the hymns that we're going to sing on our website. And the actual service book that we're gonna be using this summer, it's on our website as well. So you can go to our website, to the virtual camp page, and you can follow along with the services from home and also practice chanting with us. Now, we're gonna start out with tone one with a hymn that you all know really well because we do it almost every day at camp. Uh, we, it's, uh, O oh Lord, Save Thy People is in tone one, and that's what we sing at the beginning of Orthros. So 
Zaina, I'd like to ask you if you could give me the yeast song, please. It's on the pa. Ni pa pa. Awesome. So now I'm going to sing it, and please sing with me. O Lord, in thy people, and bless thine inheritance, and to thy faithful people grant victory over their enemies, and by the power of thy cross protect all those who follow thee. So you notice I came back to the bottom note where Zena was already singing. So if I were chanting and I got off a little bit, I would know all I got to do is get back to the note that Zena's singing because she's doing a great job by sticking with that song. So Zena, if you could take our next hymn, please. So the next hymn that we're going to sing in tone one is the Traparia for the Resurrection in tone one while the stone was sealed by the Jews. So uh, Father Chris, do you want to give us the song? Absolutely. You tell me where it is. Mm, right there, ni pa pa. While the stone was sealed by the Jews and the soldiers were guarding thy most pure body, thou didst arise on the third day, O Savior, granting life to the world. For which cause the heavenly powers cried aloud unto thee, O giver of life. Glory to thy resurrection, O Christ. Glory to thy kingdom, glory to thy providence. O thou who alone art the lover of mankind. Awesome. Thank you so much, Zena. So as you can see, we're starting to get that melody in our head. Uh, and what we mean by the melody is really the intervals between the notes, that specific part of that scale, which again is based off the pa or the re. So the more we can get that into our heads, the better we can go ahead and, and chant things together. So now we're going to sing what we always sing at Vespers, which is Lord I Have Cried, and then Zane and I are going to sing the verses for you uh, so that you can really get a, a sense of what tone, tone one sounds like. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to take it up just a note if that's okay, Zaina. Uh, Perfect. To make it a little bit more comfortable for us. Na na padiga bupa. O Lord, I have cried out unto thee. that work iniquity and I will not communicate with the choicest of them. The just man shall correct me in mercy and shall reprove me, but let not the oil of the sinner anoint my head. For my prayer also shall still be against the things which with they are well pleased. 
their judges falling upon the rock have been swallowed up. They shall hear my words, for they are sweet as when the thickens of the earth is broken upon the ground. Their bones are scattered by the side of hell. But to thee, O Lord, Lord, are mine eyes. In thee have I put my trust. Take not away my soul. Keep me from the snare which they have laid for me, and the traps of the workers of iniquity. So you can see that's tone one. And you can see that uh, what we're doing is just staying in the same kind of melody and singing verse after verse after verse. And uh, just one note about the E song too. You notice that sometimes we're just kind of singing one note, like an E or an O, like holding one syllable there. Other times we're singing the words. Doesn't really matter. Uh, you can really do either. Um, you can sing along just as long as you're staying on that one note uh, that, that's prescribed as the E song. So sometimes at the end of uh, a hymn, we'll do what's called a long or fancy ending. We do this uh, so that the clergy knows that we are done and that it's their turn to keep going. So an example of that would be, O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. And to thy faithful people grant victory over their enemies. And by the power of thy cross, protect all those who follow thee. So I put that ending on there so that we can communicate to the clergy, it's your turn, just so you guys know. So thank you, Zaina, for mentioning that too. So that's all for us for today for Tone 1. Thank you so much for joining us. We really hope that you join us next week for Tone 2. And if you tune in every week, you'll get an introduction to all eight tones so that by the end of the summer, you'll hopefully know all the tones and you can come out and chant with us next summer. All right, and if at any point anybody has any questions, feel free to contact us at the village. We'll be happy to help explain something or work with you. I would be happy to do that. All right, so see you all next week. Thank you. Say bye, Billy.